Hey, this is Matt Weary, and this is a review of the fifth album from the folk singer-songwriter Riley Walker. It's called Deaf Man Glance, and it's out on Dead Oceans. I first caught a glimpse of this guy back in 2015 uh, when Primrose Green came out, which just wowed me with this really lavish 60s and 70s jazz folk sound, you know, uh, bringing to mind people like Tim Buckley or bands like Pentangle. There was just a, a refreshing lack of restraint on every part of that record, like on Summer Dress or, or Same Minds. Those are songs that feel like the raw emotion is in complete control, just driving you to impassioned highs and contemplative lows. I love the, the balance of those Burt Janch-esque, indulgent, weaving guitars like on the song Griffiths Bucks Blues, and the more subtle, jazzy stuff like Love Can Be Cruel. It's really a fantastic album, and one that's so suited for the vinyl format. Then in 2016 came Golden Songs That Have Been Sung, uh, which was a big drop-off for me. Mainly it was Riley's whimsical and almost spoken word vocals on that album that really turned me off. I felt like he had much less of a, a rambunctious and dynamic approach on Golden Songs. Seriously, not a single melody on that album really came across for me. I felt like it was just this half-witted sort of mid-range rambling that really distracted from these glorious instrumental performances. Not that the vocals on Primrose Green were like amazing, or anything, but at least they had a little bit of chutzpah, you know, they had some vigor. Listen to a, a layered, gorgeous track like Sullen Mind and how that uninspired vocal just sort of lags in there like a sleazy drifter at a karaoke bar. So I guess now you know, I'm not a big fan of Riley's vocals, but uh, as long as he's not trying to steal the show, then I can move on. Deaf Man's Glance brings back some Chicago musicians for a, a stronger jazz sound, and really only the first track has echoes of that psychedelic haze of old. And the opening song, In Castle Dome, sets this turtle pace to this thing, with guns not a blazing, but safely secured in their holsters. A nice woozy 6-8 saunter kind of seduces you into this album and it's a really nice lead-in and it reminds me a lot of Cyan Nugent's last album Night Fiction. 22 Days opens up space for one of Riley Walker's worst vocal melodies of all time but it's got the groove of the album with mm, this little jazz rock section at the end with this jaunty bass and this King Gizzard-esque playful background vocals and this uh, just big climax with a anxious and overwhelming chromatic build and then it just crashes back into the earth and back into that cool groove. The next couple tracks are some of the most experimental here with some really unique, unique stuff for Riley. The song Accommodations has some spectral guitar chords and some creepy kind of mysterious percussion sounds thrown in there. It feels reflective but like I'm watching my life from from a distance. There's an eerie uh, kind of stillness to it like I'm in a spacecraft and looking back down at earth. There's still structure to the song as far as distinctive melodies and, and, and sections, but the band has plenty of time to just sort of bumble around, and I like that even in such a short song, there's still that open space left for what sounds like improv. Can't Ask Why is another spooky and, and ethereal one that really just puts me in this mellow mood. I love the, the sort of intangible nature of these songs. Like, it sounds so off the cuff, but there's not a wasted moment here. It's all engrossing. The end of Can't Ask Why develops into this progier intensity that eventually transitions us into some of the more straightforward rock tracks on the album. Even with the pace picked up a little bit on Opposite Middle or Telluride Speed, these are still pretty relaxed tracks. There's a real complexity to them, especially on Telluride ride speed with its jagged progressions and flute flourishes. There's definitely uh, some of the post-rock band Tortoise in there and uh, they're also from Chicago so I guess that kind of makes sense. That song's probably the hardest hitting here but otherwise it, it's a pretty slow and, and somber album overall. Yet I, I didn't find that the songs took too long to latch onto. Riley's guitar work is of course the highlight here but the background band is just killing it like 
everything they do is interesting. From the nimble bass and lightning speed drum fills on Spoil with the Rest, to the mathy riffs and locked in rhythm section on Opposite Middle. These are really impressive, really accomplished, really seasoned musicians playing some well conceived and well written songs. Simple as that. And even though it's pretty low key and pretty soft in its presentation, there's not nearly as much dead space and sleepy meandering as on the last album. If you like modern Modern folk guitarists like William Tyler or like um, Daniel Bachman, then you really get into this. But also pop Americana songwriters like Cass McCombs or like Jonathan Wilson even. Death Man's Glance is a solid 7 out of 10 for me and one I'll be sure to come back to later this year. I want to hear from you. Do Riley's vocals really irk people as much as they do for me and kind of ruin the experience? Like there's no doubt if the vocals were a little bit better and more um, just dynamic. I feel like this would be a higher rank. Uh, but let me know what you think of this and of Riley Walker as a whole. And as always, thank you so much for watching.